Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Mass Effect 3 Insanity Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the Citadel Under Siege, as I'm calling it, and uh, we're going to be making our way through the Citadel. It's going to be all burnt to shit, and Cerberus are going to be out in full force. So, this is going to be the level that introduces you to the, to the Nemesises and the Spectres. And they are two of the, the heavy troopers, well, so to speak, for the Cerberus. Uh, you're also going to be facing an Atlas, but Atlases aren't too bad as long as you can control the splash from the rocket that they do. As long as you've got that down, you'll have no issue with Atlases. Everything else, uh, there seems to be a little bit more strategy needed, because uh, on Insanity, the Nemesis will strip your shield in one shot, and if she hits your life, you'll die. So, think of her as a two-shot kill. If you don't have a shield, she's a one-shot kill. And uh, she's very evasive. She'll run around, she'll hide in cover, she only comes out to take the shot. And uh, she's like Tom Berenger with a sniper rifle, so she's pretty quick. You want to watch her. And uh, you definitely need to, to take her out, because she'll strip your, your shield, and then an enemy will start pelting you and you'll die. Or the enemy will remove your shield and she'll pelt you once and you'll die. And it can be a lot of frustrating deaths if you're not careful. But, <laughs> luckily enough, a lot of the Cerberus guys on the early places, um, unless they're not a Centurion, you can just use Singularity, make them float, and then shoot them like clay pigeons. It's, it's really fun to do. And if you take somebody like Garrus, or if you take uh, Edie, you can just overload the Centurions and then make them float, and that works as well. But, uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, I'm kind of attached to James, because the guy doesn't die, and there's just something about that that I like. He's like my Vin Diesel, he runs around and just absorbs damage, he's pretty great for that stuff. So, there isn't too much to talk about strategy-wise in these areas, because everyone will approach them differently. If you're a biotic, no doubt you're 9 miles away from the gunfire, in cover, spamming your abilities. If you're a sentinel, you're probably spamming throw. If you're a vanguard, you might be you know, confident enough to keep biotic charging dudes, but everybody's going to have their own ways of dealing with these troopers, because we've been killing them for the, the last 10 hours. It's, it's just a preference thing. And it's, it's kind of funny, actually, that I say that I'm trying to go through this game as quick as I can to get the guide up, and yet this is probably going to be the longest walkthrough I've ever made, because even a fast playthrough of this is, is longer than most games these days. It's, it's kind of crazy. But I mentioned on the other video that I was going to gold all the multiplayer maps so I could get the Unwavering achievement. Then I tried one the other day against Cerberus, and it was on the, the Array place, I don't know the name of it, but it's like in the desert and there's a bunch of satellite dishes. Holy shit, man. My god. You're taking on, like, three atlases and phantoms on wave three. It's nuts. We got to wave nine and we were all out of rocket launchers, we were all out of medigels, and it was just, it's fucking nuts. And I know everybody's going on about you can probably play as a use sabotage against the geth and do them easily but i kind of don't want to do that and i don't even know if you can do that i'd like to beat them with with a superior team but like the i, ca I thought cerberus were the easiest enemies to kill because compared to like the banshees on the reaper rounds and the marauders and stuff the cerberus seem kind of tame and i don't like the geth because they seem to take so much more damage than everybody else which is really strange because on the, on the game, the Geth are one of the most fun enemies to kill, because they die super fast. There's only the, the Hunters and the, the Primes that are even a problem, because, I mean, you go up against one Flamethrower guy, or maybe two Flamethrower guys, so they're never a real issue. And everybody else is like a one-shot headshot, and it's really fun to do, but... On the multiplayer, my god, the Geth are just tanks. The Geth are, like, full-on fucking Sentinels, they just take it, they, they eat their damage, it's, it's madness. But... Uh, this section, if there's any of the, the shield generators knocking around, take them out before you kill people. It'll make your life easier. It just makes more sense. But I'm going to talk about something silly now. And it's a serious topic that I'm going to be making light of. So if you don't realise it's a joke, not only are you a retard, but you should stop watching my videos because I automatically won't like you. And you'll probably put a dumb comment in about how I'm racist or how I'm insensitive. But, you know, that's just you being a moron. So there's my disclaimer. There's me warning you before I start. Before you all get your fucking altruistic shoes on and start telling me that, you know, you should save the children. You know, fuck the children, I don't care. But, anyhow. I'm assuming people have seen a program called Housewives... The, no, sorry, The Real Housewives of Orange County. Or of OC, however you want to pronounce it. I'm, I'm assuming everybody's seen this program. But, for everybody that hasn't, 
Like, I've never been to Orange County, I've never been to America, and I hope that there are nice people in that state. But that fucking program, those women on that program, those families on that program, I, I pretty much think that that is Beelzebub and his disciples, his dark disciples of, of everything that is antichrist and hatred. They are some of the worst examples of human beings I have ever seen. And the fact that people watch this program and fund enough views for them to make more of this fucking show is... I think it's a hate crime. I think it's a like a crime against humanity. Because this program... Oh my god. And if you like this program, it's perfectly fine. Because it's one of those things where sometimes you've just got to see a bunch of spoiled dumb bastards talk about trivial things when you know there's more important stuff to be done. But... I hate it. It gets my goat so bad. And what it is, is it's a bunch of these women who live in Orange County, who, like, they all aspire to be this plastic Barbie, you know, ridiculously tanned, ridiculously fake, uh, just pretentious as can be women who all are in high-powered jobs or all have high-powered husbands, they all have far too much money, far too many houses, far too many country houses, far too many golf courses, far too many swimming pools, and it is just spoilt, consumer, materialistic filth. It is awful. Completely awful. Combine that with the fact that, you know, aside from business, they're all a bunch of dumb bastards. They're all the thickest, most unevolved idiots you've ever seen. It's like, if they couldn't suck dick, they would have probably died by licking a plug socket or something because they didn't know how to turn on a microwave. It is it is just monstrous, but I don't like this program. You may have you may have taken this from my comments that I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I found out the perfect way to improve it. Just the almost perfect way. So, the Real Housewives of Orange County is kind of popular right now, I assume, because it's on TV. It could be reruns, I could be, you know, ten years too late for this topic, but fuck it, I'm doing it anyway. What if we combined it with the popularity of Coney 2012? I don't know what you're thinking. Stay with me. Stay with me. Coney 2012. This massively, you know, controversial topic about this, this, this general guy in in crazy African land, <laughs> who's doing some real bad shit to these child soldiers, even though, you know, there's been child soldiers for, like, centuries, and nobody's batted a fucking eye, but now it's on YouTube, everybody's concerned, and, you know, we've all got a Facebook and like it and poke it and all that nonsense, but ex excuse all the hypocrisy, the contradictions, the utter bullshit and naive idiots that follow the herd, ignore that part of it, but just think of it as, you know, real bad shit happening in Africa, or Uganda, or whatever. And combine these two ideas. So what I'm thinking is, instead of raising awareness with this this 20 minute documentary, which is essentially just a way for them to make money, they say they're doing it in you know a really nice way. But at the end of the day, I think what is a statistic that somebody quoted? Uh, I think it's by the the rules of in in America by their their laws and tradings rules of a charity, they only have to give one percent of the proceeds to the actual charity, which you know <laughs> just think about those figures when they're, they're annualizing you know millions <laughs> but anyhow, put these two things together, and instead of raising awareness, what you have is not only do you have gripping television with the threat of actual death, but you have these people going in and potentially stopping Coney. Of, of, of stopping his, you know, his tyranny and saving these children. And there's nothing, you know, nothing better than that, I don't think. And the setup that I've, I've got in mind is a bunch of Navy SEALs or ex-Navy SEALs, you know, somebody who's dumb enough to follow these women, a camera crew, and all of those females that uh, are crying over broken nails, who, you know, their eyelashes landed in the dinner and then they'll say they want the dinner refunded when it costed a grand to eat in a restaurant that people can't even walk into unless you give the, the waiter a hundred dollar bill. Th these ridiculous human beings go to this, essentially, this third world country that is war-torn as fuck, and they have to try and find Coney and stop his tyranny. And the Navy SEALs cannot intervene unless the threat of death is imminent. They're kind of like, you know, they're, they're there to be invisible, but always to be watching to make sure that these women don't get, you know, gang raped and end up having their hands chopped off and they turn up on Al Jazeera a week later with a bag over their head and everybody's praising jihad and shit. But, like, they can't do anything. These women have to fend for themselves, they have to find their own food, they have to do, you know, all these things that they wouldn't pay a Mexican to do in their garden. 
That's what we need, and I think it would make the best television ever. I, I, like, and I know it is a pretty tough subject, but by God, if a bunch of rich, spoilt bitches in the jungle wouldn't make it just that little bit funnier, I don't know what would. So, yeah, join my movement. I have got a website for it. It is, you know, OC and Coney for the win dot com, and hopefully we'll be able to get the funding. I think Fox will love this. If they don't, FX, it's it's almost certain to get picked up, and uh, we could be on to, you know, an awesome little series. But we're currently moving through the Citadel in these places that you can't visit when you actually come to the Citadel and talk to dudes. Even though this is CSEC, I don't think this is an area you can visit. It might be. I could be wrong. But the enemies are going to spawn from above, so you can try your best to try and spawn hit them. But if you see a smoke grenade, that generally tells you where the enemies are going to spawn from, because the Centurions do it just to, to kind of turn up. It's kind of annoying, really. But if you do mod your sniper rifle, you can see through the smoke. I've never done it. I've never really used it. I just, you know... I mumble to myself, and I growl a little bit, and then I just get on with the business. Just, just kill the dudes. But, there's a lot of interesting choices coming up later on in this level, and depending on how you've played will really, really affect your game. And I'm not going to spoil them, because I've almost vowed not to, to spoil too much, even though I'll probably end up dropping something. Because that's just how I work. But why, why are you watching this if you've not beat the game, folks? That's... <laughs> You need to, to beat the game. It's it's one of those things where ev it's everywhere now. And if you're taking it too slow, you're probably going to have it ruined. So hopefully you won't, but chances are you will. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and you take care now.